Good morning, I'm Daniel Cherryman, Huntsman of the Pytchley with Woodland Hunt and um, I've been asked to put together this, um, these short clips of a day in the life of a huntsman during the coronavirus. So um, I'm sitting in my kitchen just ready to go out to work this morning and um, it's a bit surreal really I suppose. Um, I think I speak for many of us in the hunting community in that we're incredibly blessed to live where we do um, and in some ways be able to continue doing what we're doing if we're um, in land-based jobs um, whilst observing social distances and, and working from home um, as, as we do in hunt staff and in farming um, and also to live where we do with, with the space around us when the weather's as beautiful as it's been lately to be able to get in our gardens or on our farms um, you know, I think I count myself as one of the lucky ones. Um, I suppose it's, um, in many ways, life's unchanged. Work continues. Hounds, as with all lo livestock, need looking after. Feeding, cleaning, cleaning out, looking, um, exercising and so on. Um, and whilst we're not taking any unnecessary um, journeys, we are continuing with our livestock collection, which we do here um, at the Pytchley. And um, of course, the, any fallen stock that dies on the farms or that needs dispatching needs to be continued to be done um, for animal welfare reasons and biosecurity and, and as a service to our farming community. So they're working really especially hard at this time of year. They work hard all year round, but lambing and calving is underway. And um, so that um, is an especially busy period and, and consequently it's a busy period for us as well with the, with the casualty animals. So um, the time's just approaching half past six and it's time for me to go and start my day and I hope you enjoy um, coming around and seeing some of the jobs that we get up to all year round but um, that are continuing in this current lockdown. The first thing that we do in the kennels is to wash everything down. So the, the beds are swept up like so. This one was clean and dry so that was just swept to the back of the lodge. We sweep up any shavings that's on the floor and then we wash everything everything through the kennels with the pressure washer in the mornings. Um, obviously hygiene and cleanliness is, is important at all times um, for animal welfare and biosecurity and things like that, but obviously never more so than at this time with, with, the, with the virus. Um, the hounds all go in the draw yard there all together, the dogs and the bitches together and they'll stay on there while we wash everything down and then, uh, and then it'll be time for exercise. This bed was one that um, was getting a bit smelly so we've, we've removed this this morning and, and then we give it a soak with a disinfectant floor to ceiling and then we'll shut the hounds out. Once we've exercised and fed, they'll be left on the yards until after breakfast. And by that time, this will be nice and clean and dry and we put a fresh bed on. So that's briefly the morning kennel routine. There's the hounds waiting patiently on the draw yard. And um, this is the bitches yard. And then any in-season bitches are kept separately. They're written down in a book for and stay in here. So these girls are in season currently and their bed's been removed as well this morning. Having washed down, the next thing to do in the morning is to walk out. Um, hounds are here, just waiting with me, ready to go. And um, we're, we're on the bicycles at the minute, but we're not thinking about getting them fit. Hey, hey, lolly, lollipop. We're just thinking about um, winding them down. They've been about three weeks since they last hunted. Bike, just wait. So um, we're just, yeah, we're just going a little way on the bikes, just a leg stretch, see if there's anybody lame, and just to, um, kind of wind down the fitness for the summer. So it's just coming up half past seven and we're just about to set off.
We're very lucky here to have this disused railway line. Which is nice and safe. The hounds really enjoy themselves. Just got back from walking out or cycling out. I'm just going to rinse their feet off now, rinse all the mud off, and then uh, they'll all go onto the draw yard in front of me there, and we'll pull the flesh in, let the light hounds in. That means the ones that are a little bit shy of feeding need a bit more time, and then we'll let the body of the pack in and, and feed them the breakers now. Now the main, main body of the pack have come in now, and they're all in feeding together. So another important reason for exercise, as well as the well-being of the hounds and obviously fitness, is to see if there's any lame ones. As with any other livestock, where you've got livestock, you're always going to have one or two lame ones, injuries, um, splits, cuts, thorns, wire, bites, any number of reasons why they can be lame. So uh, I'm always keeping a note of anybody I see who's lame. And we're just washing his foot off, he's got a bit of a cut pad, so we're just giving it a soak with some um, diluted surgical surgical wash and um, anything obviously major will go to the vets but all the all the minor injuries we keep, keep on top of ourselves here at the kennels. Time's now 9am and having washed down, fed, exercised the hounds, done the lame ones and fed the puppies, we've split them back up for the day on their yards. The in-season hounds are out in the grass yard here. There's a couple of sheep and ponies out there with them. We always like to do that to get the young hounds used to livestock. And it's now time for us to go for our breakfast. So after breakfast, um, I put the knack list together and start to plan a route and then we go off uh, picking up our fallen stock for the day. I like to, um, once the lodges are dried out sufficiently, I like to uh, give the hounds their beds for the rest of the day. So here they are waiting patiently. Nice sunny morning, but um, I'll let them in and they can enjoy the beds and the yards for the rest of the day. So we're just um, out picking up now. We're just about to pull in at our second farm of the day. Um, I think they've got a dead sheep. We get over about 10 to 20 calls a day at the moment this time of year. It's about our busiest time of year for picking up. And I reckon to be able to do about three to four calls an hour um, by the time you've driven between the calls, found the stop when you get there, loaded it up and so on. So uh, as you can see, that's it's quite a significant amount of time. Um, that spent actually making the collections as well as then um, processing any fallen stock when we get back to the kennels. So we've just made our last pickup of the day. We've been to 13 farms this morning. Um, time's now 20 past one. So we're gonna make our way back to kennels and sort everything out and unload it. Unfortunately, there isn't very much that's gonna be usable today. In this hot weather the sheep go off very quickly. Uh, we picked up in the region of 15 to 20 sheep and three calves so I think the calves will be all right whether there's the odd sheep amongst them that we can skin um, and then we butcher the good stuff, dispose of the waste and um, that'll be what we use to feed the hounds. Now the warm weather's here all the horses have gone out in the field so um, one of the spring jobs is to clear out and disinfect the stables so uh, this is one that's just been swept out ready um, to begin pressure washing and ordinarily we'd be painting them as well. Whether we'd be able to get the paint this year or not remains to be seen. Last job of the afternoon is just swilling the yards off. We always use the pressure washer in the morning, but in the afternoon we just swill off with a good old fashioned bucket and brush. It's late 
afternoon and I like to bring the hounds out in the grass yard in the afternoons if it's a sunny day like today. The hotter the better, they really relax out here. Um, I just bring the bitches and the dogs generally separately. So this morning I, the bitches were out till lunchtime and then I swapped them to the dog hounds this afternoon. As you can see it's lovely from out here, they just get a chance to chill out. And um, so the yards are all done and uh, I'm just, just getting ready to take them back indoors now to spit them up for the night. So we've done the evening kennels um, and it's time for the pups to have their evening meal and, and feed. So um, I'm just going to go into the butcher's shop, aka the flesh house. We've got, uh, we're lucky enough to have obviously the fallen stock dropped in and picked up. Uh, mutton's my absolute favourite so they're, they're in for a treat tonight. Nice fresh leg of lamb. Can't beat mutton and beef for puppies. We like to get them going on the um, score it up a bit, not quite mint, but just making it a bit easier for them. We like them to get going on raw meat from quite an early age because it helps them obviously, helps their um, adapt to the diet throughout their life so that when they come back to kennels and they're fed on uh, forward stock, they're used to it. So as well as the milk powder, which we get from the country store and, and mix up for them, uh, they're also fed on um, raw meat and then we supplement that with puppy food as well if if necessary so I've got my milk here which is nice and warm which we've just just mixed up there's two litters out here which are a week apart in age and um, they've just been weaned so they're, they're, they're all living out together it's lovely in the sun to get them out on the grass and I th find they really come on They really come on well at, with a bit of sun on their backs as well, I find. They, they're born in whelping lodges, which are like um, concrete and brick runs. But as soon as we can get them out here in the sunshine, once it's warm enough, um, I find they really kick on again. And then we, we put them back in the whelping lodges overnight, where it's a bit warmer. Uh, another little job which I've just been doing is going through the names for them. A lot of, lot of time and thought goes into the breeding of these hounds. Um, a lot of hours of looking at pedigrees and thinking about hounds throughout the season I, I'm always thinking of which hounds I want to breed from and have a sort of short list of bitches um, but one of the more fun things to do is to come up with the names once we've got the litters so we've got two litters here there's a, a four and a seven um, the first litter out of our goldfinch by Holdness Playboy and they're going to be GOs um, following on from goldfinch which is one of our bitches um, and their second litter are out of bustle who was a draft from the Wednesday by our Shamrock. So we've gone with the SH from the Pitchley Shamrock for that litter. Um, and we like to follow the lines from within the kennels. And these go back to um, Warwickshire Shaver. Um, and he's by Muskery Shamrock. So we've kept that. We used Warwickshire Shaver. And then all everything coming on from then, we've kept as SHs. So on the, the, the older litter, or the young litter rather, we've got Goshawk, Goodness, Gooseberry and Gosling. And then on the older litter, we've got Showman, Seamus, Shelton, Shortbread, Shameful Shannon and Shetland. So it'll um, be a bit of fun for the puppy walkers when they get these. They'll go out in couples in about a week's time. My final jobs, or my final job for the day is just to pop these boys' rugs on. Uh, a, couple of, a couple of horses here and they're living out full time now. They've gone out a couple of weeks or a month earlier than they would have done, um, but it's still quite chilly in the evening so we're just popping a, a light top rug on them to keep them warm um, this one almost certainly would have still been in light work for the point to point duty easter saturday would have been dingley races for the pitchley with woodland hunt and we'd all been looking forward to a nice sunny social day there so um, that's just another way that the coronavirus has affected us all the point to point season's been cancelled and um, obviously the fundraising that goes with it so there's one or two things going on online, different hunts, so keep in touch with your local hunt via Twitter and Facebook. Do keep your eye out for things like that. It's only a drop in the ocean, but the ocean's made up of drops. So if we can all do our bit and support our local hunts, then hopefully they'll still be there for us to enjoy for many years to come. So on behalf of me and these guys and the hounds, I hope you enjoy spending a day with us and uh, wish you all 